Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Recamer Citicom video, should AMD increase the core count for their mainstream series of Ryzen processors? This is a question I've got for you all, so please use the comments below to let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. And you can also find a straw poll in the description of this very video as well. It'll be interesting to see what the results are. So, just a quick refresher then at the next Horizon event, AMD revealed details on not just Zen 2, but also Rome, 64 cores, 128 threads for the Epic 2 series of CPUs. And in terms of details of the actual processors themselves, the actual Zen 2 cores, we see them built on a 7nm processors, although the um, 7nm process, although the IO controller is built on 14nm, Furthermore, we see improvements to instruction pre uh, prefetch, branch prediction, improved floating point performance, and so much more besides. I'm glazing over this somewhat because we've gone over these details several times in the past. So if you want those uh, full analysis type of uh, breakdowns, you can check them out in the video description. But none of that really tells us exactly what they are planning for the mainstream market, either for Threadripper or for AM4, assuming it does end up being on the AM4 platform. Now is that still somewhat ambiguous? So for example, we could see AM4 uh, with some processors, but not other processors. We could see AM4 compatibility technically, but uh, reduced uh, feature sets. So for example, it might only be like PCIe 3, or AMD may decide to just completely abandon the older series of boards and jump to something else if they feel that that's not, you know, the way they can go because I have a lower power delivery on those boards. Uh, perhaps they can't get the, uh, uh, if they do go with PCIe 4, perhaps they can't get backwards compatibility there or something else. I'm just giving a couple of examples. But, in the here and now, AMD have the 2700X and it's selling rather well. It's currently around 300 US dollars and you can combine that with a decent B450 motherboard which, depending on the brand and the feature set that you go for, it's probably going to cost you around the 60 to 100 US dollar mark for you know either a really basic board or a pretty darn nice board. Intel meanwhile have the 9900K. Same number of threads, 16 threads, 8 cores, same as AMD, but the Z390 motherboards are more expensive. But the killer, of course, is that 9900K is going to cost you somewhere in the neighborhood of 550, 600 US dollars, depending on retail gouging at that particular moment. In other words, it's a considerably more expensive uh, pricing proposition. You're looking at around double the cost. I'm currently testing the 9900K now. Uh, if you want my opinion, it's a really nice CPU. It is. It's very nice. I could, uh, you know, I could tell you it's not, and uh, I would be lying to you. It is a very nice CPU. Uh, stability is amazing. Uh, single thread performance is incredible. Uh, gaming performance is really nice. But it's also very hard for me to recommend it to users uh, if you don't need that single thread performance, if you don't need every last drop of power, because the Ryzen 7 2700X is very close. Uh, in terms of actual IPC, Intel do have the advantage. We actually tested this out in a separate video. You can check that out in the video description, but we ran a Ryzen 2700X and the 9900K at 3 and 4 gigahertz, and the brief uh, the brief overview of the performance was that Intel did win single thread, AMD competed rather well in multi-thread, but of course as the clock speeds went up uh, and the two CPUs were neck and neck in clock speed, you, you know, you'd be hard pressed to see the difference. But when AMD of course were no longer able to compete in clock speed because you saw this thing run up to like 5 gigahertz on single thread, that's when Intel really, uh, you know, took the victory home. There are some workloads we didn't test. I'm completely admitting that, like uh, heavy AVX uh, workloads, because, well, it just gets way too complicated. And obviously, Intel do have the advantage there. So we are just talking about basic real world stuff. Um, anyway, so the rumors are that AMD will have a 10 to 15 percent IPC gain for the Zen 2 uh, architecture. AMD themselves have said that it will be up to 29%, but that would be in perfect real-world scenarios. Perfect real-world basically means that, yes, it would be applications, real-world applications, but they would heavily leverage floating-point arithmetic. Oh, and by the way, we are comparing IPC gains here compared to the original Zen architecture. 
Clock speed, AMD are being a lot more cagey about. Uh, they have not released any details at all. We've heard some details that Epic uh, Rome can go up to like two gigahertz for the engineering samples, but that means A, it's an engineering sample, and B, that means absolutely nothing compared to Ryzen, because obviously we're looking at, even if you say that Ryzen 3000 is like a 12-core processor, there's a massive difference between like a 12-core processor and a 64-core processor. So, Clock speeds don't really mean much uh, in that area, but the rumors are AMD are targeting like 4.5 gigahertz. Whether that's true or not, whether that turns out to be, you know, something that it can maintain, who knows. But for the sake of this video, let's assume 4.5 gigahertz. Some people are saying a little higher, but I'm going to be skeptical. I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm going to say 4.5 gigahertz with 10% IPC. That means, in theory at least, the 3700X, assuming it's 8-core, 16-thread, should be slightly faster, a little faster, than the 9900K on average. Because Intel, Intel excuse me, would still have the single-thread advantage, uh, sorry, clock speed advantage, but AMD would most likely have a slight IPC gain. So there's a question, would that be enough for AMD? Well, huh, that's where things get a little tricky. Because we don't know all of the details yet about the Zen 2 architecture. I did mention earlier we see improved branch prediction and all that stuff, but what we don't know exactly is how the actual CCXs are formed of the Zen 2. Uh, you know, because obviously multiple cores go into a, a CCX and those are all held together with an IO controller. Now, we know that the previous architecture, the um, Zen and Zen Pluses, they of course had four cores per CCX. The rumours are that we might see more for the next generation of Zen, but there's not been an exact an exact answer. I did cover a uh, leak recently which pointed out that the uh, Rome processors look like their level 3 cache configuration is very similar to that of the current Epic processors, but obviously scaled up because we see more cores, so there's more level 3 caches. But that might mean that the actual uh, CCX configuration is the same. We see four cores per CCX. One, uh, Sysosandra might be reading it wrong. And the other factor is that even if it's reading it correctly, technically, we don't know whether the CCXs are further divided down. So, for example, it could be that, uh, yes, technically speaking, uh, each four cores has its own level 3 cache, but those... Uh, I, I guess you could say those mini CCXs come together to make a larger CCX or something like that. We just don't 100% know. So there's a lot of speculation right now on how all of that forms. But when that comes to the AM4 platform then, AMD have several choices. They could keep the core count identical. The fact is that for the mainstream user, honestly speaking, eight core 16 threads going into 2019 is probably going to be ample. There are some outliers out, you know, that we could point to. If you do content creation and that type of work, obviously more cores are great. Like, no one is going to deny that more cores is great if you're doing media encoding or you're doing Photoshop work or 3D re re rendering or virtual machine work. But for the average user who's doing web browsing, playing games, and doing, like, you know, a little bit of video conversion here and there, you don't really need that. So for AMD, it might make way more sense for them to just focus on getting the clock speeds as high as possible to push the TDP and every little drop of performance they can get towards boosting the clock speed. The other factor is that they might also decide that <laughs> well, you know that dice space looks kind of tasty for a built-in IGP. Now, some people are immediately just rolling the eyes and like, no, don't do that. But Intel do it with a lot of their chips, and it does help some people if they don't need a uh, discrete graphics card, or let's say your discrete graphics card breaks, or you're doing a BIOS flash with your uh, discrete graphics card, or you know you need to send it in. Uh, let's say you're waiting for a new one to come out, and therefore you sell the other one on eBay and just waiting uh, for the new one to arrive, or that type of thing. It can be an invaluable boot diagnostic tool as well. Like, okay, well you're doing a bare bones boot because your system is just not, you know, it, it, you're just getting that that fun black screen or the system's just not posting properly. You take everything out, you take all the SATA cable, you know, all the SATA cables out, you have one stick of memory, you take the uh, discrete GPU and all of that stuff. It can be kind of handy in that regard, but I do grant you 
In terms of performance, it doesn't really help any. How much as well would it cost for them to increase the core count? AMD just might not want to uh, sell a processor for let's say 450, 500 US dollars because they feel A, it would be too close to the pricing of Threadripper and if they were to bump the core count up that much, well, then you're gonna be wanting users probably to be more veered towards Threadripper anyway, like a you know entry-level Threadripper model. And we also don't know the state of how the IO would play out there. Like if uh, AMD were to increase the core count that way, would there be enough memory bandwidth to sufficiently feed the CPUs? AMD certainly have options to uh, them if they did want to increase the core count on AM4, they could go with tri-channel memory. I'm not saying they will, I'm just giving an, an example there. They could certainly increase the memory channels on the mainstream, but I don't think that this is exactly a likely scenario. Despite that, there are some reasons AMD may wish to increase the core count. The one is that Intel now have eight cores, 16 threads for the 9900K. And AMD, at least in terms of marketing, get a lot of mileage out of saying that they have more processor cores. It works rather well for Threadripper as well. The fact of the matter is, yes, the you know high-end Intel uh, HEDT, uh, HEDT CPUs, excuse me, you know, certainly have advantages over AMD, but in terms of value proposition, Threadripper is just a really nice uh, CPU or series of CPUs. And in terms of the mainstream, the fact of the matter is that AMD holding that core advantage over uh, Intel has certainly helped them a lot in marketing and market share. What they do have right now, of course, is the pricing. So they have to make that decision. But let's just say that, you know, they could release a 12 core processor for like 400 US dollars and they could release an eight core processor for like, you know, 300 US dollars. But once again, with all of the advantages, that might be one of the ways they could go. And, you know, for folks who don't necessarily need all of the, all of the additional IO of Threadripper, but want that that extra little bit of performance because they do maybe a little bit of game streaming or whatever. Therefore, they don't necessarily need all of the I.O., uh, but what they do want is just the extra cores to do like, you know, encoding on the fly or what have you, then it could be nice. And other people, they just want the core count just to say they've got it. Another fact is as well that if you were to look at a lot of the standards which are about to come into PCs like PCIe 4, DDR5, AMD just may feel that for the consumer end of the market anyway, it's better just to release a CPU that offers the best IPC gains that they currently can put out with eight cores, 16 threads, and then wait on the next generation of Zen, which of course will be built on 7nm, and then they could be like, okay, now's the time to increase the core count because we feel that you know, we can take advantage of the additional memory bandwidth, we can take advantage, you know, of the uh, improved communication to the GPU with higher bandwidth there, with PCIe 4, we've got DDR5 to better feed the additional CPU cores and all that stuff, but they also don't feel that they're tackling too much at the same time. They don't feel that they're drastically needing to boost the IPC and clock speed while simultaneously trying to increase the core count as well. Once again, I pass the question off to you. What would you like to see from AMD in this regard? Would you be happy to see the core count remain as is, or would you prefer them to focus on something else, perhaps just as best pricing as possible, the highest clock speeds of possible, or something entirely different? In the not too distant future, I'm gonna further drill down into the Zen 2 architecture and some of the rumors concerning what the layout of the chip will be. But for now, I did wanna put this out because I'm curious on everyone's opinions regarding this very topic. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.